Greetings traders, this is Houston Trung from the Trading Asia Org, and here is your market watch for June the 21st to the 25th, 2021. Hope you had a good trading week, and boy oh boy, do we ever see a resurgence in macro. So that's what I'm gonna call this week's video. I wanna call it the return of macro because if you weren't paying attention to the macro story before, this past week kind of shook things up a bit and forced you to pay, begin to pay attention now more carefully to what's actually driving the markets, and that is the macro narrative. The strengthening of the U.S. dollar, the U.S. bond yields, and the, and, the, and, the, and, and the movement in bonds is what's now moving the markets, and that's what we need to begin to shift our focus. It's not so much now about the, you know, the meme stocks and you know the uh, the fang stocks that we've seen in the past or the the reflation trade um it's really about watching the macro picture right now and that appears to us driving the market um in this current narrative now this one single week um may not be the start of a new trend here it's only one single week's uh, data but it's certain certainly something to watch out for because if you recall what i mentioned in, in the last two weeks videos the DXY is something I've been, I've been watching very carefully because it's been uh, exhibiting some divergent price action from the rest of the assets that we watch. The rest of the assets that we've been watching have been playing out according to this sort of reflation slash inflationary narrative. But the DXY contract, that is the US dollar, was actually getting stronger for the past two weeks. And we'll, we'll get to that chart in a few moments here and you'll, you'll understand why you know, I had been harping on watching the DXY for the past few weeks and we saw that play out this week with a big move in DXY. We'll talk about that in a few moments. So for the coming week, let's uh, focus on the calendar for a second. Uh, a few things to watch. Number one, home sales numbers. So Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the uh, existing home sales and new home sales numbers respectively. And on Thursday, we have jobs claims, another uh, good data point to watch. So keep that on your calendar. So let's go to the charts now and we'll spend the bulk of our, uh, the rest of our time in the charts and going over what we now see playing out across these asset classes. So DXY is really leading the charge here and I had explained this and talked about this in the last few videos. Now I'll, I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time here just because it's interesting to pull back the curtain a bit and see the bigger picture. Uh, but then we'll talk about the analysis I did you know, the past couple weeks and where we go potentially from here. So here, big chart, we always start with the big chart first. That's, you know, I'll call it the big chart, but it's one of the higher time frame charts that we use, the three month. And we can see right now we're still inside quarter. And the unlikely scenario is that we actually break above last quarter's highs. We only have two weeks left in this quarter. I think it's gonna be very difficult, even though DXY has kind of been on fire for the past couple of weeks, well, especially this, especially this past week, for it to actually go another, uh, I think it's another like 90 cents uh, to take out, um, let's see here, not yet, more than 90 cents. Just to reclaim the last quarter's high, uh, just reclaim the quarterly open. We'd have to move 90 more cents to the upside. I don't know if that's going to be in the picture for DXY, but that is something we need to be aware of. In my probabilities, I'm, 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 I'm putting it more in the, in the likelihood that we stay inside quarter uh, for the rest of the month. And then with the new quarter, perhaps then we actually take out this past uh, quarter's highs. And if that happens, you know, that is not gonna be good for the equities markets and won't be good for the commodities markets. So, you know, the commodities markets tr typically trade um, inversely to the strength of the US dollar because the DXY or the dollar, excuse me, is the denominator. So when you trade gold or oil, you're trading, you know, gold versus the uh, US dollar. So if the US dollar strengthens, as an example, then most commodities are probably gonna fall and um, more than likely, people are gonna be uh, also getting worried about uh, the strength of the economy. So the US dollar will probably be, or sorry, the US, US equities markets will probably get a lot weaker as well. But enough, enough prognosticating, let's talk about the actual price action. Here's what's inter interesting, right? So here, if you zoom out a bit, you can see that we had the low of the year put in, uh, sorry, not the year, but the, the uh, or a significant low put in back in February of 2018. So a good, you know, uh, two and a half years ago, we had a low put in. And back in January, it looked like we were heading back towards that low, that low being uh, 88.253. So back in Jan here, 
we had started going, we were going Momo down. So it was Momo down, down, and then we ran out of steam right here, the, the month of February. So here the Momo down move, and it was actually in the Bollinger Bands, right? So if you know these videos, you know we watched the Bollinger Bands, Momo down, it's Momo down, doing a Bollinger Band walk to the downside, and then it gets extinguished right there in Feb. We get a, you know, a, a good rally here in March, but then it fades again in April and May, uh, May and, 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 sorry, April and May, in June now we have a higher high. So with uh, two weeks left in the trading, so approximately 11 days, um, it's going to be very difficult for this thing to break above the quarterly open and to break above the quarter's highs. So I think that's going to be a, a less than likely scenario, but I think we still have a little bit higher way to go before you know before the buyers run out of steam. So in the weekly chart, here we go. This is what we started watching, right? So we were doing a Momo down right here in May for several weeks. And then all of a sudden we had this outside bar. So that was a red flag because I think most people thought we we're finally going to break, stay below that 90 range. So here's the 90 range right here, right? But they bought it back and this outside bar threw a lot of traders off sides. So basically we got that outside bar and they had to reset the board again. And if you got stopped out of your short and you got stopped out of your long, you have to get back into this trade and ultimately it's been doing Momo up now for the past one. Well, this is the uh, you know this is an inside week, but then it's a continuation here this past week. So this week here, I had flagged it and saying this is something we need to pay attention to because the DXY is diverging from the rest of the assets. So to drill down really quick, because it's actually a very interesting price action. I want to I'm gonna make uh, you know I'll just you know re replay it for you. If you recall this week here, I had I had said this bar is significant, right? So we have this big shooting star here. At, you know near the end of that that week's trading remember so if you go back to a few of those videos uh, that go at the beginning of the month I said this is a, a shooting star and we should see continuation of the downside but if we don't and we take up that high that would be significant right because most people are, are will will not be expecting that and that's what we got that week afterwards it didn't happen right away so right so we had the shooting star and went down first but then that day there it broke above okay so that was significant because anyone who got short here had to cover and that actually creates the momo up move so look at that um, high there right that's 9044 you go back to the weekly chart that's the high of that bar right there right so that's the high of the outside bar see so 9044 and that break above there creates the Momo up condition. And so long as you don't break below the prior bars low, that Momo up move is in play. And so that's how it's played out. It went Momo up inside week last week. And I said last week, very it came very, very close to taking out the prior week's high. It just did not do it, so we stayed inside bar. That week's high was $90.627. It got as high as 9611. Right, so it came really, really close inside bar. That means it quite, couldn't quite do it. That means we didn't get the follow through until this past week. We got a two percent move, which is a significant range expansion move. Right, so if we look at the uh, the bands here, we're significantly outside of the band. So it's, it's a range expansion move, not the typical uh, average weekly range that we typically see with the XY. So back to that daily chart, that's how it played out here where we have that move there. So this day here was significant. This is the day where I think we paid, it was, it was worth paying attention to because that creates the Momo up, all right? And then it fades, tricking everyone, thing, things, you know, everyone kind of fell back, you know, it fell back in here and it looked like things had just become normal again until it picked up here and went outside. And this is this week's chart, right? So here is the beginning of the week, inside bar, outside, inside, we know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be range expansion, outside bar here on Tuesday. So this gets people offside once again, which makes it a tricky trade, right? So this is tricky because if you try to get long in this sequence here, they may take your stop out if you get it too close before it actually makes the move to the higher. And finally it goes Momo, right? So this outside bar up, 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 right? So the people get squeezed here now and folks who were short now have to cover. So a real interesting pattern they're playing out with DXY. 
and that's where we were watching it. So I think DXY now, what we have to watch out for here is that it's 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 going right in the Bollinger Bands. So it's possible now that you know people are all are off sides. That means there are some shorts that are going to have to probably cover. So they could squeeze them. Very likely, the people are still short DXY, and they may get squeezed here. We may see a multi-day move higher. So it is doing the Bollinger Band walk. It's actually Momo up and a Bollinger Band walk. So we simply want to see now how far this thing takes us, right? So we're waiting to see where when does it break the prior bars low. So here it's going to open on Monday, wherever it does open up here. If you break below Friday's lows, that extinguishes the the Momo up move and the Bollinger Band walk move, and that will be your wrap for that that uh, that sequence. Now it could simply pull back and consolidate and shoot higher again, but this impulse move will be extinguished once you break a prior bars low that's what i'm watching for in the near term let's talk about the spy and what happened to the indices actually let's go to our friend vix first and uh, see how how that played out so the vix vxx um it's still momo down on the monthly chart so right now the vxx is doing a lot and you know it's not not moving that much in terms of um um uh, in terms of of uh, the prior month's range, but it did make a pretty good move this past week on the daily charts. So this week here, we do have a, a reversal. So it had been going down to the lows, and then it popped up this week to the tune of 12%. So th that's the kind of move you expect with, for the for the VXX when you have this volatility pick up here. And all I want to really point out here, so once you see that dollar move breaks down, and of course when the dollar breaks down, you know what's going to happen to commodities. We'll talk about gold later on, but uh, here this is your Fed day your Wednesday, Thursday, it, get, it goes down, it goes Momo down, but look at that support. See here, see that purple line? That's the weekly open. This is why you watch those levels. The weekly open holds, they actually try to tag it and break below a couple times in the week, could not do it, and finally Momo down, breaks above here on Friday, actually gaps up, and I mean, there's a squeeze. So the gap up, this is basically a, a bullish kicking pattern. Simply means when you gap above the prior bars uh, high, right? So you had a red bar prior, you have a gap up above the prior bars high. Now, that means anyone who has been short this now, thinking it was going to go Momo down, it was going to fade more, is now trapped. And if you don't cover right away, they're going to squeeze you all day to the tune of 8.70%. We actually break above the monthly open. So here now we do have, see that's, so now you, you do have uh, a couple of time frames aligned. Green week, green month, but still a red quarter. So 11 days left in the quarter, but uh, you're going to have a chance now for VIX to pop up higher here. Um, so that's that's something to watch out for. Okay, so it's a situation now. You're 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 breaking above the prior uh, um, prior um, a week's high. Uh, so possibly now they go after some of these other pivots. The quarterly open being up here. So perhaps we get up run up up to here. I think in the short term there's a good good chance that we see some, some weakness in equities. Uh, but this is something. This is an important week to watch because again, one week does not make a new trend. So we need to really watch and see. Do the buyers step up in equities um, and fade the VIX and fade the US dollar, or is this begin the beginning of something bigger? So this past week was a little tricky to watch because you have that quad witching playing out on Friday as well, and so we don't know right now uh, how much of Friday's action um, was based upon that quad witching effect, and people simply haven't closed out their positions. So we'll see very clearly on Monday um, if we get that continuation move or not, because uh, uh, you know this continuation move. On the VIX, this is a two-day chart. We got a you know outside bar. We go Momo up. Yes, that's going to be a continuation move to the upside on the VIX. That means more downside on the SPY. Okay, let's go to SPY now. Speaking of SPY, okay. So SPY currently a red month. So this SPY did get all-time highs earlier in the week, but then came back in right now. But SPY still has seven months of consecutive higher highs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, I'm wrong. Eight consecutive months of higher highs and higher lows. So very likely. Um, I don't think so. We'll see what happens. Maybe we turn to an outside month. That's that's you know that's totally possible. We still got 11 days left. If the sellers really step in here to create an outside month, you got to break below 404. All right, and that's still be green quarter. So that would not be the end of the world, right? Because you still have a green quarter. But that's something you need to look look out for coming into next quarter. If you close in here somewhere, right, and this bar doesn't look as green anymore, it looks more like a shooting star because we close here. Then watch out if you break below this past quarter's lows. Yeah, watch out, you can come back in here again because then that breaks the Bollinger Band move to the upside on the three-month chart. Now, we've got a lot of time, so we've got 11 more days, so we, we will be revisiting this chart um, well before that, but something definitely begin to begin to think about. 
So for now, red month, we lost that all-time high. We're back in the range again. This is very tricky now in terms of getting back to all-time highs because you have to break back above that monthly open. Once you open high, you come back in. It's very difficult to do that because there's going to be natural sellers who show up here um, at that monthly open level. So we had gone Momo up and higher. We had an all-time high higher in the week, right? So that's an all-time high, but then we faded it. That creates a an outside bar to the downside and you expect me to see the outside bars to at least take out that bar and they did it because that's a momo up and that's bad trade location we've been talking about it for a while now right it's like when you, this market is not reward chasers and if you do if you chase you're going to get punished and that's what happened this past week people here on the daily chart were buying these all-time highs and those folks they got spanked right so here here's the beginning of the week inside bar up and unfortunately this is just you know um it, it's you have full time for an alignment, but this is the situation here now where you do have blue skies here, but um, it's it's risky. It's very risky. This type of tr uh, of price action, we've talked about it already. When it's jagged like this, it doesn't take much to rip right through it. We've seen that you know across a number of asset classes. When you have you know a slow build to the upside, then all it takes is one big move to the downside, and it wipes out the gains for the past one or two weeks. So that day there, basically wiped out the gains all the way back from here. Uh, May the 21st. So a good month of gains gone in basically one day, right? Well, you can say more than one day because it starts selling off here on Wednesday after after FOMC. So inside bar up and then a little higher, another higher high on, on Tuesday, and then they faded it. That's basically, uh, is that a red dog reversal? An RDR? Let's see, a gap reversal. It, uh, the high here is 42537 open yep so there you go that is a gap reversal right there on wednesday i didn't actually choose excuse me i didn't catch that so that is a gap reversal small one very small one but uh people hit it right away and they basically fit it back and then you know you, you know the rest of the story there so to watch out for now this is what's an interesting point is that we had this identified right so on the um, weekly charts we know that level right there is the outside bar is the uh, momo up if you break below that low there that's gonna basically extinguish that Momo up move on the weekly chart. Same thing on the two day chart. You had a Momo up move right here. Momo up, up, up. So that, that orange level, that's your monthly open. Okay, so once that level breaks, it is party over. So that level happened here on the Wednesday, on the Wednesday here, right? So broke below that level and now they faded it. But here we're going right into the Bollinger Bands now. So that's the 50 day moving average. So uh, do buyers step up here? Let's see something to watch. Do buyers step up here on, on, uh, on Monday? Tuesday or do you break below the 50 day and we begin to do the Bollinger Band walk to the downside. That's what we want to watch for. If you break above here, then that extinguishes the Bollinger Band walk and maybe we, the buyers begin to repair the charts again. But that's what we need to watch for this coming week. On to Qs. So Qs, this is where the macro picture comes in, is that we actually have a rally going on right now in the long bond. So the TLT is doing very, very well, whereas the US 10 year yields are actually coming in. So the bonds are going up in price and the long bonds are actually going up in price faster than the short term bonds. So if you compare the, and I'll talk about this when we get to the charts, the TLT versus the IEF, TLT being the long bond, that's 20 year plus bonds in duration versus the IEF, which is the uh, shorter term bonds. Um, the long term bonds are actually rallying right now and that's actually good for uh, growth stocks so I'm not gonna uh, belabor that point but that's good for for the growth stocks and this is why the Q's have been rallying uh, from a relative basis they've been doing a lot better than the rest of the indices and this is why something like ARK is doing very well as well so this past week ARK had a really good week so, so far right now you know no big damage on the Q's we had a down bar last month they got hit hard last month they repaired it this past uh, in this current month we you know we're still trading above last month's highs this past week we do go whoops that's the wrong chart there we do go for a one, two, three, fourth consecutive higher high and higher low in terms of weeks. But this coming week, we do need to watch that range. All right. So if the markets get hit, I expect the Qs to get hit as well, maybe just less hard. But if we break below this, uh, this bar's lows there, that's certainly going to be a reversal. But we still have full time from alignment right now. That means a green month was a green week and we have a green quarter. So right now the Q is looking the best out of the bunch. So here, interesting thing to watch is that there's your Wednesday FOMC. So it goes inside bar down, but on Thursday it goes inside bar up. So it's, if you recall, the SPY does not look like this. We didn't have that big green day on the SPY. Um, in fact, the SPY had a red day. So strength in the queues. This is actually good for stocks, uh, good for, for, for growth stocks now with a stronger bond price. So stronger long-term bonds indicates usually um, that there's going to be uh, uh, um, perhaps more deflation 
and that's usually good for growth stocks, not good for cyclical stocks. So right now what we're seeing is we're seeing the rotation back out of the reflation trade into growth names. So you know, make note of this, right? Because what we're seeing now is that that inflation, that whole inflation slash reflation narrative isn't as strong as people thought, at least not in the intermediate term. So people are now moving out of the reflation trade, so all those cyclical, cyclically strong names, and back into growth. Because recall, growth, I'm talking like names like the FANG stocks, they held the best during um, the COVID crisis, right? So during the, you know, the dark depths of the pandemic, the FANG names, the growth names, were actually doing the best because those names do best in deflationary times. So from a relative basis, people will, might, will, will rotate into those names. So here, inside bar down, that's inside bar reversal of the upside to all-time highs there. So that's Q's all-time highs on Thursday. And Friday, even all the damage on the rest of the indices, inside bar. So this coming week, we break above here. We can see again another new all-time for Q's. But if you do break below there, watch out because that'll be a red week. We'll still have a, a green month and a green quarter. So that's going to be a mixed alignment there. But as I said, if we break below this past week's lows, that'll be significant because that will be, if the Qs kind of hold up, I don't think the rest of the indices will hold up, either, hold up either. And then we'll see stronger selling because everything should be trading in correlation. So there's your Qs. Uh, watch to see how Friday's range breaks. Now let's go to, to Dow. And this is why last week, um, it was kind of a, the writing was on the wall there. Um, it looked like it was the damage is contained until we broke below last week's lows. So finally, Dow gets a reversal on the monthly chart. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven months of consecutive higher highs and higher lows until this past month. So notice how we had been doing the Bollinger Band walk, and now we broke that. That's significant. We have a monthly reversal, and it broke the Bollinger Band walk. So now these cyclical names, these guys who had been really benefiting from that reflation slash inflation trade, this thing is not working anymore. You need to pay attention to that. If you're if you're long that stuff, you need to watch out. And this past week, you know, I had given it, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt when we had this inside bar week. I said, okay, anything still happened here? The prior is that the problem is that you have that monthly open right there, and you have a green quarter still. But you do have to watch out once you break below that low. That's that's what we draw the ranges, right? We drew those ranges. We saw the inside bar there. Once it breaks, that's the side you need to be pay attention to. Inside bar down, and now we're right above, you know, we're still maybe a buck or so above the quarterly open. Okay, so the Dow never got a chance to reclaim its all-time highs. It got stuck below that monthly open. That's the why we watched that level. So on the daily chart now, it's, do I want to show the daily? Yeah, uh, no, let's do, let's do the two-day chart. Um, yeah, let's, let's do the daily chart because this is actually looking a bit extended. To me, this is actually very extended here, and it's possible now that we might get a, a short-term blip to the upside here because we've had, count them, I think it's six, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive lower lows and lower highs. So this is very extended here now. And if you short now, right, that's actually chasing. So folks, who, if you short now, I want to redraw this past week's range so you see it. If you, break, if you short here on Monday and it breaks below, um, it's it's very stretch and extended, so would not be um, surprised to see this thing snap back higher to stop out any late shorts. Because getting in short here was nice, because that's the prior week's low. So sorry, I want to redraw that really quickly here so you can see it. All right. So over there on Monday, you broke below the prior week's low. It went out. It went inside bar and down, and then you had plenty of time to get into that. You know, Monday, Tuesday it was still hanging in right there. Then on Wednesday, it tagged it again. Could not break above last week's the prior week's low, and then you you collapse on Wednesday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, you know, now that move has been, is has been playing out for six consecutive days now. If you short here now, you're very very late to the game, and you're gonna have poor trade location. So. If anything, you might want to wait for this thing to pop up again, but you have that quarterly open right there. So it's not fully, you know, it's not a super bearish condition yet until maybe next, maybe pop up here now. I start to do this, this, uh, uh, this chop because you have mixed time from alignment. Green quarter, but it's probably going to be a green, a red month and maybe a red or green week, depending on what we see there. It could very, very well be choppy here if we break above and break out of this Bollinger Band walk to the downside. Otherwise, if you keep doing that Bollinger Band walk to the downside, if you're already short in here, yeah, you just keep holding that position and hold it and see how far this BB walk goes. But uh, until until that thing breaks, the, you know, the the the, the short-term bias is the downside because it's still going Bollinger Band walk to the downside. But you break above Friday's highs, yeah, watch out. You're going to see some short covering there as people made some good money to the downside here being short the Dow. 
Russell. Let's go a little faster here now because we've got a lot of ground cover still. And the Russell, we have this situation where we did have um, an inside bar down and back up again. It took out uh, April's highs, but could not take out the all-time highs back in March. So now you're back in the range again, and it looks like we broke below that quarterly open. So on the weekly chart, it looks like so. Weekly chart, we had one, two, three. Um, not this week. This week was not a higher high. So we had uh, three higher highs in terms of the weekly chart, and then we broke below that. So now we have a reversal going on, and we're trading below the prior quarter we're trading below the quarterly open so this now is something you need to pay attention to because it is trading full time frame alignment to the downside uh definitely want to be perhaps more short on that one and and, and uh and um um more short bias on that one than let's say the cues so this is going to be the line in the sand right there that quarterly open if we continue to trade below that, that is full time from alignment with the upside, right? So you want to basically play in that continuation move. And this is why we're kind of seeing this mixed bag right now because it wouldn't take much if you break, you know, let's say a Monday, you break above here, then you've got mixed time from alignment because then all of a sudden you have green quarter or red month, maybe a green week, and then that's just going to be chop city here if you cannot clear the monthly open. That could just turn to something like this, all right? So let's redraw our ranges there because we do have a bit of a big range here now. And if you cannot clear that range this coming week, we do not break below Friday's lows. We get back into here. That's going to probably be an inside week. All right, so watch out for that possibility there. You might people could just get get into, settle into this range there. Now TSX, I had been wary, wary about. So TSX finally got hit here, um, but we're still looking okay on the monthly chart. But we're doing the Bollinger Band walk to the upside. So we have 11 days left, as I mentioned already. We're doing the Bollinger Band walk to the upside, but this is turning more and more into a shooting star. All right, so if this falls back on the range here for some more. Uh, then next month, next quarter, watch out because we can get a reversal there, especially if we start to see commodity prices come in here. So on the weekly chart, there we go. We still get a higher high. We did create an all-time high here this past week, but that bar clearly looks like you know a ha a re an inverse hammer, right? So now this coming week, do we break below this past week's lows or not? If so, we probably challenge that monthly open, but we're probably gonna have a green quarter because that quarterly opens way down here. So we still got a lot of potential here to the uh, uh, lot, you know, there's a lot of, of white space that you can clear down here. It could still turn into a green quarter, but again, you, you could give back a bit here because this is a Momo up move and you break below this past week's low and that's a Momo up reversal short. That means it breaks the momentum pattern to the upside. So on the TSX, we've already begun to have a bit of a breakdown we take a look here on the daily chart, we got a Momo down move, right? So Momo down, and on the two-day chart, this is what I mentioned last week. I said, watch this two-day chart. We're going Momo up and possibly entering Bollinger Band highs. And uh, we did not get the Bollinger Band walk, but here on, um, this is the uh, Wednesday, Thursday, create the outside bar, right? Now you're Momo down, so watch out here now. Do you break below this bar's lows? And that will create the reversal on the weekly chart. And that's a continuation of this Momo down move on the two-day chart emerging markets so let's just the Asian markets here and we're definitely getting weakness here so uh, this is something that I was uh, I thought we were gonna play catch-up with the uh, Asian names uh, and the Chinese names but we're not seeing that so once we got back into last month's uh, range you know I said last week get a watch out for that because this is not this is not strength anymore right we have a good gap up here and you fade it you get back in the prior month's range yeah something's not right there and we see it playing out there now where now we've had three consecutive you know red weeks in a row on EEM so a high open right so we, always, we always watch for that you get a high open and you fade it more than likely they're not going to be able to break up back above there again in this time period so for this time frame the monthly time frame very unlikely we're going to turn this uh, month green again so your question now is do you break below that quarterly open because this past week they tagged it right so they tagged it right to the t there you can see it on here third wednesday and friday they tag it by stepped out right now stepped up right now but um yeah it's, it's still a lot, a lot of possibility for weakness if you break below that quarterly open that's something i'm watching for now is do we break below that quarterly open and then if you do that's full time from alignment with the downside so that you know that means we're, we're going to see material weakness on the we're seeing material weakness play out in the charts uh, so maybe things aren't as rosy in uh, in asia as we think right so that's something to continue to watch out for now the bond picture so this one's interesting tlt as i said the you know this this um, week's video is really about the return of the macro and here's the, you know, there's a real divergence happening here, right? So you have bond prices going up, uh, but you have you uh, and the dollar going up. So that means, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a mixed bag there, which is a bit confusing. Um, but the whole, whole point is 
you really want to let the price action lead uh, and 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 um, especially during intra week uh, where you're you know when you when you you don't have time to, to make sense of the narrative until the week's done right so I see a lot of people unfortunately you get caught up so much in the picture and trying to understand why things are happening missing the fact that things are actually happening <laughs> right so you know there's plenty of times to create the narrative uh, maybe when the markets are closed um, for some deeper reflection usually over the weekend during the week it's you know it's about having your your plan in place and being responsive to that and understand what you're gonna do if these levels get breached so the TLT has kind of been working out to it in you know, the way we've been talking about. I said, you know, we've had the reversal happen already. And it's been playing up to the upside. The thing I've been saying is that I just don't think we're going to break out of this range. So even though we had a decent move in, in bonds, you know, a, a pretty decent move actually, I just don't think, think we take out last quarter's highs. So more than likely we stay inside quarter with 11 days left. So inside a quarter so far, uh, inside our reversal played out. So this looks a lot, you know, similar to what we saw in gold, but gold got weaker when the US dollar got stronger. Uh, inside by reversal, so that thing's still playing out. And on the weekly chart now, we have how many weeks? One, two, three weeks of higher highs. Okay, so TLT can certainly move a little higher here now, um, especially, since, especially since we had uh, actually two weeks of, of higher highs here. This week was not a higher high. Um, we have two weeks of higher highs there now, and uh, this is something to watch for. So on the daily chart, we got the outside day here on Wednesday, Fed day. They went outside bar up, Momo up, up. Good for, again, strong long bond, usually means a strong uh, growth sector, good for Qs, but we're going right into Bollinger Band highs now. So this is a Bollinger Band walk, Momo up Bollinger Band walk, uh, nevertheless. Um, but here, you get extended, all right? So if you're chasing, you're just buying a long bond now, this is, this is a nifty place to buy. This is not a good trade location, as I've been saying already. You don't want to chase, and the markets have not been chasing uh, or rewarded, rewarding the chase. So in fact, if you buy here now, poor trade location, you got the 200 day period right there. So Monday, let's see what happens. How far does this long bond move take us? Do we tag the 200 day? Do we break above it? Do we head to keep going higher? You don't know, we don't know, no one knows. So the point is, this is a moment up move. We're just simply gonna watch and see how long this move extends for. Once you break below a par bar's low, that extinguishes the Bollinger Band walk move and extinguishes the moment up move. So very, very simple conditions to watch for. And it gives us a very, very clear uh, understanding of the price action playing out and how far this goes because things are, are trending now right so the trending session is trending but they're it's a momo move so that means people if they're buying they're gonna buy uh they're chasing so once this move it gets extinguished you expect a strong reversal to back to the downside again stopping any people who are who are late to the party so now we want to see but you're not gonna step in front of that you want to simply wait and see how far does momo move take it maybe it takes that 200 day out can you break above it or is it break right through again that's what we're watching for Let's go U.S. 10-year because this is the interesting one because the 10-year um, has been getting weaker. So the U.S. dollar is going is going up, um, but the 10-year is actually going down. So that's an interesting one. So here inside month and down, more than likely, right? We stay inside quarter as I've been saying already. I really did not think that we were going to break above last quarter's highs we're just fading back in that's kind of what we've been talking about guys that's the inverse of the uh, of, of tlt this is of course the uh the, the tenure but the tlt is uh is the long bond now interestingly the uh, tenure it uh ended as an inside week so this is a really really nice setup here now because we get the chance to see how it's going to break okay so inside week there which way does this one break inside bar down or is it work to back up here again and do some sort of uh maybe another inside bar because that's a pretty big range the issue here for a long uh, for the 10 year yield is that you're certainly trading full time from alignment of the downside so the bias is to the downside you expect this thing to break to the downside but you're watching for that right and watch for the possibility that if you pop up in here it could turn to another inside week but then with full time alignment to the downside you expect this thing to go lower we just don't think it's going to break below the prior quarter's low right because you have a lot of range there to cover so i don't think that's going to happen it's still going to be inside quarter but the bias is certainly the downside there uh, because you have all time frames looking red right now so that's your uh 10 year yield there on the monthly uh, monthly uh, sorry the daily chart it's momo down the uh, weekly open turned into a bit of resistance here. You can see, uh, sorry, support, excuse me. But you can see how the monthly open right there on ch on Wednesday, Thursday. See how significant significant that level is. And tag that monthly open could not close above it, could not break and stay above it, and turned into resistance. And then it went momo down 
on Friday. So, you know, that's that's interesting because now we're going one more down. Now on Monday, if you break below this past week's lows, right, that's an inside bar down, and that's going to be a Momo down sequence on the daily chart. So right now, sellers are in control here. They're pushing a Momo down. But if we break below here, right, that's also going to trigger the inside week of the downside. Expect more continuation. So that's how we, why we expect a resolution of the downside because that's where the trend is pointing to. So let's talk about um, gold now, so MGC. So the reflation trade is certainly taking a hit here, and that's definitely being being reflected in gold prices. So as I said last week, you know, a strong US dollar not good for commodities, and not good for gold, and that's what we saw this past this past week. And uh, is that gold really got hit along with silver and a bunch of other commodities? So here, outside the bar, outside bar now for uh, MGC on the monthly chart, right? So outside bar. And on the weekly, here, we identified this last week. Outside and inside, the question was which way is going to break. And recall, we were watching that 1908 level. That's the yearly open. And we had tried to break above there for three consecutive weeks. We tagged that level, could not break above it. Outside and inside in this past week, that break the downside happened right on Monday, and that was that was it for for gold. That was you know that's all she wrote. And yeah, it's going to take a while for gold to be able to fix that chart because again, if you look at the monthly chart, it's an outside bar, right? So there's very little chance that we're going to turn this month green. It's already a re it's already an outside bar. I think it's very very unlikely we, <laughs> we turn this month green. In fact, you know again we have the quarterly open right there. It's still green quarter. So it looks like this on the quarterly chart. Uh, but more than likely, look, we probably stay inside quarter. So um, it's not like the end of the world, but certainly gold has definitely taken a big, a big hit here now. And for the rest of the quarter, you know, we, we might pull back in here closer to the quarterly open. Uh, but it'd be, it'd be quite, quite something to take out this and break out below last uh, quarter's range. If we do that, that'd be very significant. I expect this thing to stay inside inside quarter for the rest of the for the rest of the month. But that's what I'm watching for as a as a, as another scenario is that maybe we go and break below last month's last quarter's lows. I think that'd be very unlikely, but that does happen. That'd be very very significant. You want to watch for that. So on the daily chart, you know, it happened right away on Monday, right? So it was Momo up on Friday, last Friday, and then right away on Monday, it breaks below the prior uh, uh, Friday's lows, and they immediately take out. The prior week's lows, and that's the outside, inside, and down on the weekly chart, and that's why it looks like this aggressive move. That's what you see. So this, all, remember we talked about this, how this is all really bad market structure because all the outside bars people chasing? Well, this certainly wipes everyone out. So anyone who got involved here, they're gone, all right? So went all the way back down here to take out, basically, uh, maze lows. So maze lows, that's why we have the outside bar now on the monthly chart. They all got wiped out. So anyone who bought at the beginning of May, you're either underwater or are seeing red or had been seeing red at some point. So yeah, that's that's uh, quite the move here in gold. Same thing on on, uh, on silver. So gold now, you're deep in the Bollinger Band walk, uh, Bollinger Bands, so you're doing the Bollinger Band walk. How far does it go from here? So one of the interesting, so this really hurts the, the, the reflation trade, right? So you're seeing a lot of things and I talked about it already while I'm watching housing this week. I'm, I'm looking at Toll Brothers specifically. I talked about this, you know, maybe about a month ago. And I said, this is not looking good for, for Toll Brothers here. Because if you recall, this is a Momo up situation going into the Bollinger Band highs on the monthly chart, and uh, that looks really strong, right? You're like, yeah, that looks great, doesn't it? Looks looks like uh, housing's on fire, and that you know the, the, everyone wants to buy a house. Problem is that you know we know what's going to take to 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 break this scenario, this condition, because you're doing a Momo move to the upside, and you're doing a Bollinger Band walk. If you see a lower low, boom, like that, it's not going to look so good anymore, does it? That's right. That's now not looking so hot anymore. Now we definitely see the possibility with this being full time from the line with the downside for more weakness. So this coming week, this is why I'm watching this home sales number, these the ones on Tuesday and Wednesday, to see how this bigger pattern plays out here because you know Toll Brothers and other housing stocks have already been showing you for the past several weeks that things are not as hot as a people are, are the narrative narrative has been trying to, to to play things. So outside bar down, momo uh, momo down reversal to the upside, but then they fade it. So we cannot get that higher high, and now it's been fading for the past uh, three weeks. So now full time from line of the downside, maybe we get back to this 200 moving average here on Toll Brothers. Okay, let's talk about digital gold now because the crypto markets are just, you know, they're also um, kind of a no man's land to be honest. If I was, you know, if, if anything, I, you know, I, I said last week that I, I, I had been short, um, but I was going to cover my shorts if we if we broke above 
the prior week's high on, on Bitcoin. I did that. I covered my shorts, uh, picked up some longs, not a lot of them, because I what I knew what I do know about right now of Bitcoin and the rest of the uh, the crypto market is that we're trading inside month, and this makes it very very tricky here because. I just don't think that we're going to break outside of the prior month's range. I could be wrong, um, but right now, we are trading full time from alignment of the downside. So if I had to take a, a trade, and I did take some trades, I'm currently short, net short, on the trading front. So, you know, it's because I want a bit of exposure. I'm not, I don't think we're going to, um, you know, in the likelihood that we break the downside, uh, we break somewhere, it's probably going to be the downside. And I want to be involved in that, even if it's just a little bit. So. Uh, you know, currently holding some shorts here, but I think more than likely we're probably going to remain inside week, uh, inside month, excuse me. Um, so that, you know, this month will hold inside month if we stay above 29.563 on Bitcoin. Right now, it's basing right on this upper uh, broad information trend line, sitting right there on the top of that. Um, so uh, this, this issue is that this maybe the trade goes nowhere. The next two weeks and the next 11 days, just frustrates a bunch of people as a chop sideways here because the ranges are getting tighter and tighter. So, weekly chart, Bitcoin did do that inside buy reversal. So last week I said I want to flatten my shorts. If we break above this past week's high, the prior week's high, we did that, uh, but then they faded it. So the pattern though is not broken. So I'm actually still long some Bitcoin, but I'm short a bunch of other alts. So I'm still long Bitcoin here. Oh, actually, I'm long Bitcoin um, when it broke above that. I'm still long it, and this pattern doesn't break until I'm giving it here. 31075 on Bitcoin. So I'm kind of hedged a bit because I'm, I'm short a bunch of stuff and then I'm long some Bitcoin. Um, um, so I'm kind of hedged out here um, and kind of waiting for the marks, marks to show me which way it's going to really go. But the problem, as I said already, is that you're inside month and it's going to be very tricky to break that range from 29,563 all the way up to 59,589. Right, so you got a huge range here now and you can simply be in no man's land as this thing begins to, to you know just to chop around. Here's the thing, right? So that low there, if, it's, if it holds, that will likely be the low of the month. So if that low holds, that will be the low of the month with two weeks left of trading. That's that's my bet right now on Bitcoin. I could be wrong, but that's why I'm short a bunch of other alts. Okay, so Bitcoin, that's that's the chart there. And um, if you if you look at this, if you recall, like this this we're doing basically playing ping pong um, on the daily Bollinger Bands. Last week I showed it already, right? We hit the lower Bollinger Band there, and I expect a tag of the upper Bollinger Band there. So we got we got that right. So went went end to end. Problem now is that you see sank back in the range again, and now you're full time from alignment with the downside. Red quarter, red week, or red month. So that's not a great looking chart by any means. That's not a good looking chart whatsoever. The only thing now that is positive about Bitcoin that I can say is that you have this low in place three one zero seven five, and that it's an inside month. If you break below this low, then you really need to watch out because then that's going to come and play very, very quickly. So I don't think know if that's going to happen. I, you know, I think it's going to be very it's, the inside month is very, very tight right now because you can see how how the bands and the ball and walks are basically just going sideways. That's called consolidation. Now, if something comes out and news comes out and it breaks below that these bands, then you definitely want to watch out for that. But right now, you can see the bands are right there. You have the average weekly range, and we're sitting inside that range. So right now, we're doing. A lot of nothing going basically sideways from top to bottom arranging and, and chopping people up so that's uh, that's the the environment we're in right now with bitcoin now ethereum not much difference on ethereum we're seeing basically the same thing here and here is the issue with ethereum you're inside month as well and i just don't think you break outside of last month's range it would take a lot you got to take out 1755 to the downside to go take out this bar's low Right, so I just think you're gonna probably end up outside inside month to close out the month of June. That would be what I what I would expect. Um, but I am short ether, <laughs> so that's what I expect. But I am short, so you know I'm I'm, I'm trying to take some um, be a little bit uh, agile here and take some quick profits when my shorts are in, in the money. But because my bias is the downside, uh, because I think right now we were seeing this pattern play out. I'm looking for this low to get taken out, but it takes a lot to take out that low. But if it does play out, I want to be involved a bit um, to hedge up my, my Bitcoin trade. But this one here, this is what you don't want to see. Oh, I don't want to see if you're short. You do not want to see uh, this bar's high get taken out. You take out this bar's high, you have a green quarter, a green week, and a red month. That's still mixed time from alignment. That's still choppy stuff there. So not clear right now. Everyone's frustrated with this move, but that's exactly what you need to do right now uh, is you need to consolidate basically the gains. So this outside inside, um, 
you know, would be basically just be a big consolidation move and would frustrate the heck out of most people. So I think, um, yeah, I, th I think that's a good way of, of, of kind of framing it. So for now, Ethereum kind of do a lot of nothing, but here's what you want to watch out for is, do you break below this past week's lows? Because if you do, you have the 200-day right there. 200-day moving average is right there. And actually, excuse me, I, I'm going to jump back to Bitcoin really quickly because I, I forgot to show that part, is on Bitcoin, you got the 200-day in play and you're below it. So Bitcoin is actually a little bit ugly because look, here on Tuesday, there, it was a you know end-to-end -end Bollinger Band walk move, hit the bottom band to the, to the top end, and then hits the 200-day right as well right there. So 200-day acted as resistance, upper Bollinger Band acted as resistance, and the um, yeah that ends up being the, the high of the week, and it fades back in. Ethereum, a little bit stronger, just because it has the 200-day the below it. So maybe people try to defend when it gets down to here. This is the 200 EMEA, by the way, not the SMA. So we got a move to the downside here. If it does happen, we break below this past one. Again, the week's not done yet. We still got another um, uh, day and a, day and about four hours to go. Uh, so this is not the this is not the exact low of the week because the week hasn't closed out yet. So we need to see how this thing breaks. Uh, but right now, very tight stuff. You can see the Bollinger Bands are still kind of um, are still kind of flat. But look, we're actually being opened up a bit. So we're starting to do the Bollinger Band a walk to the downside now. Here, if you break above this high, maybe we spike, maybe we pop back up again. So not an easy trade whatsoever right now. And nothing wrong right now if you're sitting on your hands if you want to do nothing with the crypto markets because they're certainly, you know, especially Ethereum and, and Bitcoin, the charts are not very clear. Okay, lots of time frame uh, misalignment um, for Ethereum. And the reality is that's because they're so correlated, any kind of good news in Bitcoin will cause your shorts to... to, to um, uh, to go awry, so a tricky trading right now. Uh, probably don't want to be too aggressive in these markets. So two more charts, and we'll wrap it up. Total, uh, in, it is the crypto total market cap for the overall crypto market, hovering at 1.48 trillion. Outside, inside of the month, I don't think we break out of that range. To be honest, the more I look at it, it's like, yeah, I, I just don't see how we break out of that with only 11 days left. But I could be wrong, so we'll see. You know, we just, that's why you know we're, I can be strong about my opinions. But I'm uh, trust me, I'm holding it very, very loosely. If uh, if things break down, you know, I'll definitely be participating um, on bigger size. But for now, the inside bar reversal, of the upside, we did fade back in again. So long as we don't break below uh, last week's lows, this reversal pattern is still playing out to the upside. That still potentially could be the bottom could be the low of the month for what for all we know right now that we have to assume is the bottom is the low of the month until it gets taken out so next this coming week if you break below this bar's low then you come for that if you don't take out that low that still is looking at like the low of the month okay and one and this is interesting here on the daily chart you're hovering right on that tuner day it's right there but you are a full time from alignment of the downside on the total chart, red red quarter, red month, red week, right there. Only saving you right now is that tuner day. That seems to be you know, but people are buying, stepping up there, and it keeps tagging off that. Now, if break below there, watch out, right? If you break below, then we definitely can see lower prices. But right now, that tuner day, that's that line in the sand. It's so funny, that's that's holding so strongly. And same thing with our final chart, the shit perp chart, which basically you know tracks a bunch of shit coins still inside month i just don't see how you break outside this prior month's range so inside month right now for shit perp inside week so really really tight trading this coming week if you break somehow break above this past week's highs that would be interesting uh to the upside because then you can might maybe do a move to the upside here it would be on mixed time from alignment though because you still have a red quarter but potentially if you break above this past week's highs you can clear that orange area then you got a green week and a green month that's a lot of ifs there, uh, but we're watching for that potential scenario. And finally, look at that shit perp chart on that 200 day again. Look, people are literally buying that area and they're defending that uh, that 200 day. So it's 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 staying strong right now. Strong, well, not slightly relatively, but they're they're keeping that level intact and not allowing it to break and, and close below that level. So keep watching that 200 day on shit perp on the total chart. So that's a wrap for this week. So if I were to summarize, you know what I'm seeing here. Uh, a lot of macro headwinds going on, right? So a lot of head scratching stuff. You, so you have a stronger U.S. dollar. That's something that that's the most important thing to be watching for this week. Is does that U.S. dollar rally continue? So is this something is starting something bigger, or do they fade it? So you know, is it was you know all was the past week's uh, weakness based on you know maybe maybe some of that quad witching that happened on Friday? 
So do we see reversal there? Or do we start to see this uh, play out more in the indices in the stock market? We see you know Dow continue the downside or Russell continue the downside. And if we see the queue is to give up its gains, then yeah, that means there's no uh, there's no safe havens in equities. Uh, we're going to see a deeper pullback on the equity side. So lots to watch, lots to watch out there. And again, these commodity names that we've talked about already, um, uh, the the narrative may now it's, it still could be. We may still be in a larger, you know, um, a bigger super cycle uh, inflationary environment. But for the short and intermediate term, uh, we're seeing more deflationary pressures, which is explaining why we're seeing weaker bond yields. Um, and a stronger U.S. dollar, strongest U.S. dollar being prop, you know, being a place for safety. People go and they have weakness. They're going to rush into the dollar, and because it's deflation, we're seeing lower bond yields, higher bond prices. So that's a summary there. Hope you got your mind around that. Um, as traders, you don't have to understand all this stuff. Just keep your, uh, you know, your your mind focused on the price action and trade what's in front of you. As always, hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the videos. Uh, really like seeing the big numbers now in the in the uh, in the um, number of views this past week, past few weeks. So, thanks to everyone who's tuning in. Uh, if I can do anything to improve the videos, let me know. Drop a comment in the uh, comment section on YouTube or over at the blog of the TradingEdge.org. Have a great trading week, and we'll talk again next week. All the best.